Good to see you guys. Good to see you. All right. And we're just talking about our elevator experiences. So hopefully we'll have many more (laughs) coming up in the future. But I just want to start. This was kind of like a magical type movie. And I just read something, Adrian, where you said that that's what Wes created for the cast. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I think I was referencing what a magical experience it is to work on a Wes Anderson film and how unique that is. And um, I've worked on many, many films in my lifetime. And and his, Wes has this unique um, sense of building a community and um, a, a, a true bond for all of us, and uh, you know, we we dine together, we stay in the same hotel. We, it, it's kind of like a, an actor's summer camp, and we're all there and fully immersed in the work. And it's just a a lovely experience. And and then he created this magical set, Asteroid City, which. Um, Jeffrey and I have spoken about it at length that he built in this field in Spain outside of Madrid and he creates this American desert town there and uh, it's just spectacular. It's really a spectacular uh, thing to experience. So it was it was very magical. Fantastic. And like I said, it is kind of like this whole magical movie because it does take you back in time like Jeffrey, even your character, the general. That's funny, funny kind of reminds me of those generals you would see back in those movies back in the day when they thought somebody's going to land. You know, telling people, okay, get ready. We're going to have everybody over here. You're going to be doing all this. He was tough, but he was in charge. Yeah. Yes. Until he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, as well, it, it's it, the character's layered. All of these characters have uh, uh, other lives as opposed to the ones that we, you know, that we see um you know, at first blush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's a performer as well, performing as a performer mm-hmm. in some ways. I think the movie is a celebration of story and and celebration of of performance and a certain golden age in American cinematic history. And Wes uses that as a stage to explore um, these human, um, these human things like community and love and grieving loss. Um, it's, 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 it's a meditation on many things on contemporary America and also this kind of nostalgic America. Um, there's a lot there. There's a lot there to chew on. Uh, and it's, you know, it it looks stunning. It's beautiful and extremely well-written as all the all his work is. Right. And like you said, it is kind of a great look back because I've talked with everybody about this, how we're now so used to communicating just like looking down like this or you know something else, where I guess you even had it set up where everybody just communicated with each other. Like when you had dinner and everything, no cell phones, nothing like that. I don't know if there's a, if there's, a I, there's never really been a discussion about it. I think there's a sense of immersion. First of all, there's there's, there's a huge responsibility in in um, honoring the material, and Wes has a very specific uh, approach, and um, all the actors know that. And I don't think there's much time to be diverted on your phone or other uh, distractions. But I think everybody's so interesting. You're you're yeah. constantly around something that's that's uh, or someone that's. Um, something yeah. to share. So, yeah, yeah there are present. no restrictions on yeah. cell phones, but I think Wes definitely has um, an appreciation for non-digital time. Mm-hmm. You know, he's more of an analog. Yeah, guy. it's an analog <laughs> <You> know, movie. <laughs> he's, a, he's a vinyl record <laughs> totally. kind of guy, definitely. you know? Mm-hmm. And I think there's something incredibly right mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more that we become kind of you know, with this. enslaved mm-hmm. by these this technology and the devices and the people who manage the devices. I think Wes is saying, you know, there's something else that um, that's better that we had right. that maybe we can we can retrieve. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm for that. How are you both? We're Great. Well. How, How are, are you? you? Doing well. Nice to see you. Good to see you both. I dare ask, what was it like going back to the fifties? 
even though you weren't there the first time. But. Well, you know, that's, I mean, it's interesting. You do get a sense. I have teenage daughters, mm -hmm. and it's like you do get a sense that the 50s for women, you were constrained. You didn't oh. have too many outlets for your creativity or your sense of adventure. And I think the character that I play is someone who she really, she wanted to go to Hollywood and see what would happen to her, and she wasn't quite able to get out of her cookie trooper regional headmistress mm -hmm. position. Um, so she wears a uniform with pride, but you know, I'm happy to be alive today. As complicated as things are, I think it's it's a better time for women, for sure. And how? It's an interesting yeah. question because I was like, you know, the history of Korean Americans, you know, at, in the 50s, it's, there weren't many. So uh, I was like, oh, I'm in Westworld. That's where I am. So in Westworld, anything is possible. And so I wasn't, I mean, because I was like an American, didn't speak with a dialect, you know, so it's it's... Uh, in terms of my research, I was like, okay, I had to kind of invent my 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 history, you know. So it was like, yeah, I can be a scientist, and I was working probably for maybe NASA or something, you know, um, and maybe was born and raised. So I just kind of made it up. <laughs> yeah, great. Like I said, it's it's a whole interesting thing because you're watching and you're going, okay, things go in this way, but then it goes another way. And you're just trying to figure out, I mean, it just even has that great line, you can't wake up if you haven't gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just says so much, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You describe it as, it's as like a, a... Like a Zen koan, like that's yeah. how I described it, because it's not, you, it doesn't really make sense, and you can't really make sense of it intellectually. And I think, like a Zen koan, it's meant to stop your mind and experience wonder, experience something beyond. If, what's happening is not, you can't understand it. So you have to go somewhere else with it. You have to kind of go into your heart. But I think every, I do think it, so. Every person takes it to you know they understand it for their own life. And to me, it's about you know because this movie is made for the time we're living in. It's like you you gotta you gotta unplug. You gotta unplug. You gotta rest your brain. You gotta put that phone away. You gotta sleep mm -hmm. so you can really wake up and face the day. You know, I mean, to, that's what it means when I see that that bit. Well, that was actually going to be my next question. That was yeah. the other fascinating thing. You're watching this 1950s people talking to each other, right. communicating with each other. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's doing right. That, yeah. yeah. And now, like you said, you go to a restaurant, and you look down, and people are yeah just constantly. Yeah. So it's almost like maybe we could wish we could go back a little bit. Yeah. I know. I, I feel the same way. I miss I miss that time. The nice thing about the set that Wes creates is that we're all living together and having dinner together, and people are not sitting on their phones you know, uh, just totally checked out, which happens in our work world. Um, everybody really, you talk and you realize how nice it is to actually talk to somebody. It, it, yeah, he's very much of an analog type person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've I never mean, he shoots seen, on film. Never oh, seen wow. him on his phone. Ever. Yeah, no. Does yeah. he even have a phone? Oh, that would be a movie itself. I yeah. get to give my phone away. <laughs> really good. I, I've had it before. We're probably, we've all done it. We've left home and for some reason you left it there. And then you're just paranoid. You feel like you don't you know, have any right. clothes on. Right. You, it's like right. absolute panic sets in. Like, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. Halfway to Chicago from Detroit, do I turn around <laughs> or do I stop at the store and buy a new one? And then it's like, man, hell with it. I know. Just <laughs> I know. Remember, remember back when we just looked at a map and made yeah, a call? Yeah, and a, yeah I love going to see But doesn't it feel like an adventure when you don't have your phone? Yes. It's like, wow, anything could happen now. Yeah. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. Because what was mm -hmm. it like? I know neither of you were there, of course. What was it like to go back to a time where there were no cell phones? No way of connecting with people, just with something that you dial up. Well, you know what's awesome is that Wes and his sets and crews, there really aren't very many cell phones at all. They're, you know, no one brings their phone to set. So yeah. you have this experience of this weird idea of talking to each other. Yeah, so, it's fascinating. You know, instead of people sitting on their phones texting with someone a million miles away, you actually become, you get to know folks. And invariably, because of this wonderful caliber of talent, you, you start to become... Friendly, they're also interesting. That um, I certainly made many friends for life on this. Oh, I can imagine it. And just like with what you said, it was kind of strange even just watching the movie, just where, yeah, everybody's talking to each other. They actually do have to communicate. And if you don't understand something, you either have to look it up or get an answer from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, there yeah. was no Google. Right. It's pretty, it's a pretty, I, I don't know if you saw it, but there's like a new Apple like eye goggle thing that just came out that like is complete. It's like where your iPhone's over your face or whatever, basically. Yeah. And I was like, oh boy, it's over. <laughs> like, like human connection and conversation. Like in the advertisement, they have someone wearing it, someone else coming up to talk to them and, and then just like keeping their eye goggles on. And I was like, oh boy, I want to be in Asteroid City again. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, it's like, geez. Right, it's like, it may be back in time, but 
I want to go back and enjoy it. The aspects of it that are, you know, about interpersonal connection for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then even just how things have changed where I was a kid, I remember going to school in the sixties as a you know kid and they used to take us on those air raid drills where we'd have to go into the basement of the school, mm. sit on the floor, put your head between your legs and basically practice kissing your butt goodbye in case something happened. Yeah. And now, you know, they kind of found out, okay, that wasn't going to happen in the first place. But those are just kind of some of the stories that they got out there, you know, just yeah. kind of like a little fear factor. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're always trying to make us feel like the world is ending. Right, right. And Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know. And, and it also kind of even brings it up to date where some of the things that happened over the past three years, you can kind of like put them together where there's this quarantine. Fear. Yep. And everybody going out buying every roll of toilet paper. Can you remember that going to the store? Like, where the hell is this stuff? Yeah. I think it was Larry David or someone saying that if he goes to someone's house and finds they've stockpiled toilet paper, the relationship's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree. It's like, well, how do you want to go to the bathroom? You don't need all that. Yeah. And also Wes, of course, has his own way of doing things. What was that like working with him? For me, it was just a dream come true. Um, the way that I love to work with a director, if you have the luxury of someone who has such clear vision about what the story is that they're telling and uh, how they want you to move through it, and then you just get to kind of fill in all the sparkly details of your human's inner life um, mm -hmm. and kind of try to bring these kind of beautiful structures and shots into existence. And I, it's just like a privilege and a joy.